K2, name recommendation, recommendations for elementary school 14 and high school number three, page 184 of your agenda. Mr. Savoy. President Keller, members of the board, thank you for your consideration of this informational item. I'd like to also invite the members of the committee to come on down here uh, and stand with me. I know we have a few of you that are prepared to speak and everyone else can come, come down as well. The board may have some questions. I'm going to do a brief presentation, a little overview on the process and how uh, the committee reached uh, the decision to make its uh, recommendations. And then uh, we have a couple of committee members, three of them that would like to briefly just talk a little bit about their thoughts on the process and the different names that they're recommending. So first of all, y'all come on down here. You can come get on camera with me. You gotta be in the in our television audience would like to see you. <laughs> uh, just behind me is good or somewhere on the side. So the committee charge, as you'll recall from Policy CW Local, is that the board will appoint a committee to study the submitted name nominations and recommend up to the top three for consideration by the board. For the elementary, the, the committee is bringing one forward. Uh, and uh, for high school number three, the committee is going to be bringing two names forward for your consideration. And those were the two schools that were folded into the charge, reviewing the timeline. That was back in August when you appointed this committee and uh, going through all the different dates. And this is also online on the naming web page for people who may want to review this presentation a little later. Brings us all the way here through the meetings and the nomination process. This is where you will hear the formal recommendation. That's what this is. According to policy, you must then wait till the next board meeting to actually approve the names so that that gives people a chance to speak out one, you know, for or against or, or, or provide any kind of feedback or thoughts that they want on any of the name suggestions before the board actually uh, can consider making the, the, the vote on the formal name. And that, right now, we have scheduled for the December 11th meeting. Uh, according to the timeline. The membership on the committee, uh, each of you appointed two members, and just to kind of give you an idea of, of where we got uh, to at the, at the end of the process, two did not participate. One had to step down, one member did. And uh, in the case of the high school, one of the committee members had to recuse themselves from that vote because one of their relatives was uh, being considered, and according to policy, they could not uh, participate in the conversation uh, about that that school if one of their relatives was being considered as one of the contenders to, to have the name placed on that school. So for the high school, it gave us a, an, a committee of 10, and elementary school 14, there were 11 people for the committee. Uh, and name submissions, we had a total of 545 that were submitted uh, for the high school and 237 submitted for the elementary school. This includes repeats and includes different nominations, same people. So that's just the total number of response, which we were excited about. That's a great number uh, of responses. And uh, with uh, elementary school 14, uh, what the committee did was they, they reviewed the, uh, the names and, and had a kind of a round one ranking. In this particular case, using the, the criteria, the lowest score was actually the best uh, the outcome. And Eulen Elementary, by the committee's discussion in this round one, uh, was, was at the top of the list. In round two, Eulen was also at the top of the list. And so that's probably quite a bit of the reason that that's what the committee wound up deciding to do. Um, once they were done with their, their, their uh, narrowing of nominations and recommendations, ultimately the people uh, that were present, the vote was five for Eulen, three for Porus, and three for Cullen. Uh, the committee then voted nine to one to bring forward Eulen Elementary School uh, to the board for consideration. And I put a few extra slides about Eulen Elementary School uh, because that may be one that people may not be as familiar with as the two contenders for the high school. So uh, just a, a few bullet points from the uh, city of Eulen's website. Uh, the name that we're bringing forward would honor the, uh, the historic city of Eulen. Uh, it was named in 1909 with the establishment of the post office there. Historians credit this person, uh, this Louis uh, Shea, with, uh, who moved to the area with naming the community for a German poet, and that was Ludwig Uhland. That's where the town gets its name, and it's the school. The school uh, was, uh, there was an old school that was a Uhland school there, and uh, the former schoolhouse currently serves as the Uhland Community Center and City Hall. 
And uh, just a little fun fact, Ulan residents won first place in the Rural Neighborhood Progress Contest in 1947 and placed in the upper town for the next four years. So they were, they were doing great things. We found some really cool pictures. This is, uh, we believe, the Ulan School. I do not have a date on that, though. So those are some of the uh, early Hay CISD uh, school children before we were consolidated. Um, <laughs> they were the uh, uh, girls' basketball champs in 1935. And this was my favorite find of all on that site. Uh, here we have uh, a picture of the, the basketball team. And notice we discovered the mascot, the Yulin Kangaroos. So just throwing that out there. If that turns out being the name, you never know. So that was pretty cool to find that for Yulin. Um, that, and that, that's, a, that's a little bit about the Yulin recommendation. High school number three. Um, and this one was very close. The first round rankings, uh, William uh, Mo Johnson with an E. Um, uh, actually, I talked to the family, and an E is more prominent than without an E on the Mo. But, um, that one slightly uh, was ranked higher on the, the committee's first round of narrowing down. Second round, you'll note that it tied with, uh, with Buda High School as a recommendation, and Buda was a very close second on the, the first one. And so that is what um, ultimately led the committee to bring forward both names for the board to consider. And so the way that worked out, there were six people. By the time uh, the committee got to the vote, there were six of the ten members. Four had voted for Johnson and two had voted for Buda. And so then collectively, all six of them that were still present said, you know what, let's bring both of those names together to the board because uh, we had some people, four of the members, had to leave kind of during the discussion. So they said, you know, at the end of the day, these were the two that, that rose to the top. We're going to bring them both to the board. And that's what brings us here today. Uh, of course, uh, Buda High School, that's a photo in, from 1950. It's a historic school. It's also a, a source of community pride. Uh, the arguments uh, in very brief uh, for William Johnson, William O. Johnson, first superintendent and a unifier of the area. And so that concludes the presentation that I have. Um, these are the, the three names being considered for the two schools, and I will turn it over next to Josh Harper uh, to talk a little bit about his experience. <coughs> then we'll hear from Fiona O'Neill and then Kevin Foley. Turn that up a little bit. That, that's good. All right, and I don't know if I need that. I'm pretty loud. Um, my name is Josh Harper. Uh, I'm an O2 graduate at Hayes High School. Um, born and raised in this community. Um, spent a few years at A&M and then a few years in West Texas, but other than that, I've lived here my whole life. Um, I'll tell you, starting, I kind of went through whenever I was asked to get nominated to do this, um, I started thinking about what, what I want in a nomination. And my whole, my whole thing was, if we're going to name it after a person, that they did more than just their job that their life work spoke for itself, right? And I also went into it knowing that we don't have to name it after a person because throughout my careers of different jobs I've had, I've dealt with a lot of school districts and I've noticed they name them after just random people. And it's not necessarily some, somebody that somebody's proud of or that the kids get behind or that they even know. Um, and so I went in thinking we don't have to name it after a person if it's not the right time or the right place or whatever that might be. Um, so that was kind of the thing. Uh, going through, um, Ulan, like I said, came to the top pretty quickly. Um, it makes sense. It's in that community. That community does have pride. It's a small community. We all know that. Um, but it gives them something to get behind. Whether, whether it's the kangaroos or not, you know, it's, it's something that they can get behind. Um, it's something that the kids like and that it's their school, right? Um, that was the easy choice for us. I think Ulan, Ulan just makes sense. Um, when it came down to Mo Johnson and Buda High, um, before, I, I, before all the nominations came through, I, I tried to kind of stay quiet. I know a lot of people who knew Mo Johnson, um, and I didn't want to influence my opinion until I knew what the nominations really were. Um, and so we saw the nominations. I had a feeling his name would be mentioned. So I started talking to people. I actually, born and raised here, had never met him in my life. Um, but I talked to a lot of people that did. And my, my question was, is this somebody that's going to come back in 20 years and they're going to say, well, we've got to change the name, right? Who is this guy? And are they just that special? Um, and overwhelming, the answer was yes. Um, I think he's a great candidate. One of the things, and I'll just tell you, one of the reasons I voted for Buda High was one of my votes, um, was Mo Johnson was, everybody I talked to said, yeah, he was, you know, the Kyle this, the Kyle, he coached the Kyle High this, the Kyle that. And I heard a lot of Kyle. For me, he's an obvious choice that we need to name something after him to remember his legacy. For me, I just don't know if that's the high school. One of the things that pushed me towards Buda High was 
whenever I was in high school, I went to Hayes High, right? It wasn't Buda Hayes, the newspaper didn't do that. It was Hayes High School. And people knew where you were from, right? Um, I talked to some friends that lived down the street from me, and one of them played football for San Marcos High School. Nobody says San Marcos High School and goes, where's that at, right? Um, so that's one of the reasons it pushed me towards Buda. And after all the nominations and stuff, I started talking to neighbors and friends, and a lot of people um, really were pushing for Buda. I think it had the most recommendations, um, or nom not recommendations, nominations. Um, and that was kind of where I, I felt like that might be something that, again, the community can get behind the same way that Eulen can. I'll just say it, I think all three are great choices. Um, I wish you all the best of luck, because no matter what you all vote on, it's going to be right and wrong in different people's eyes, right? We all know that. Um, but I think that I, and I hope that this committee did a good job and brought you all two serious nominations for the high school, and I wish you all the best of luck on it. I have to lower it a little bit, just a tad. Um, so first, good evening, trustees. I want to thank you for including the community in this decision. I think that's huge. Um, there's a lot of communities around in other school districts that don't elicit the help from the community. And so some of you have seen me a few times in the last couple of years, and I just really appreciate you guys letting us participate in especially something this big. I'm really excited because both my boys will attend this new high school. And so therefore, um, it's exciting. But when we were asked to participate, I recalled the board meeting where we talked about rezoning, and I think we were lucky enough to be sitting behind the McCormick family when you guys made the decision to name the school. And that was something that was really neat to experience. And so the committee we were on was a little contentious, and but then I was like, oh yeah, that was a good committee. Everybody really liked being a part of that and being a part of that. So it was easy to say yes to this one. Um, as a group, we went through all 500 suggestions. There were tons of them, and it was really neat to learn about so many different folks in our community who really contributed over the years. And I think Jim Cullen was brought up so many times. Um, Mr. Porras was brought up, and what an amazing contributor he was. Um, those are the ones that stick out because I think we vetted over those quite a bit. Um, but the name that kept coming up for me personally was Mo. And the reason was is because especially now in a time where we seem to be divided as a community in several, you know, rezoning committees and high school locations and all of that, he was a unifier and he was somebody that brought Hay CISD together. And he really he really meant it. He was born in Buda, went to Buda High School, went through school, then he was a part of Kyle and he was um, I think five years in a row, champion basketball coach. His sister told me that in Buda Soda Fountain. It was kind of cool to hear that. But he was a part of both communities, and that gave him a really unique perspective to be able to join Hay CISD and make us one community. And so while, you know, I know that that's above and beyond for a lot of people, and to me it's just something that's positive and something that the kids in the school building, because at the end of the day, we're giving a name for those kids to get behind and those kids to cheer on. And to me, I do think it's important to have some, whether it's the pride in community, which we, we love Vita, go Bulldogs and Colts and all everybody. But I also think it's really cool to have a person that was such an integral part of our community. Um, and that's kind of where I kept landing every time was going back to seeing the McCormicks here and seeing the pride of that school. and. Um, Mo was amazing for our community and so you guys have a really tough decision we gave up when it was 50 50 we were like <laughs> all right it's on them now but I really feel like both names are I mean it, you can't go wrong with either one and Yulin was that was a no-brainer for all of us I think we were pretty sold on that immediately um, but this particular high school is going to be something that for generations our kids will come back to you. And I just hope that whatever the decision is that we pick a great mascot and all the good stuff that goes behind it with it. And you know, I'm ready to wear the shirt and be all a part of high school number three, but that's kind of a boring name. So um, <laughs> that's really all I had. Um, I just wanna thank you again for letting us be a part of this. You guys really are inclusive of our community and um, that also helps to bridge many gaps that we see right now. So thank you very much. And that's all I have. Sorry, I was late. Uh, 
Um, my name is Kevin Foley. <clears throat> I've lived in this area for about 17 years, uh, 17 and a half. Uh, my wife's family is born and raised from this area, uh, the Bales family. And so when I was asked to do this, I was honored because uh, I know how much it meant to my wife's family to have the gymnasium named after her granddaddy. Uh, family and naming stuff like this is pride. Uh, you know, it's not just going to be high school three. I came from an area, Plano, where we named all our elementary and middle schools. And in the high school, you got Plano, Plano East, which is Pesh, and now just Plano West, which, you know, I mean, there's just, there's not a lot to it, especially if you're not from Plano, then you're from one of those other two. And that's not how it is here. Here we're entrenched and pride. Uh, something I've seen more so recently with Lehman High School, as they become more and more successful and everything they do as their student body grows, you know, coming from a new school, it's hard to start. It's hard to establish that pride because it's not there. Hayes has had this pride for how many years? And Lehman's is just keeps climbing and climbing and climbing. Uh, so to start with the high school, for me, it, I'm not going to say it was a no-brainer because it was, because it was so obvious. It was William Mo Johnson, my personal choice. And I submitted it through the web thing. We went through our process, uh, even whittling down the names before we made our formal selections, you know, coming up with uh, just what are we going to start considering. Vote after vote after vote for the high school up until the end, it was William Mo Johnson. You know, he's one of the first graduates. We all know the history. Buta, successful coach, uh, youngest, what do you want to call, superintendent to ever be elected to a school board. I think he was, what, 26 when he was elected school board uh, president. Uh, when we unified the district, uh, I learned this from you, he asked one of the Kyle school board to step down to make room for Wimberley. And that to me is a sign of unification. And this school district, as much as we, it'd be so simple. Let's just take 2770 and just cut it to the cement plant, high school number three. We're not gonna do that. I know the districting committee and our 22% status that we've got to make sure every school has, it's not going to be that simple. So there's going to be a mixture of residents at this school. Uh, so let's give them something to be prideful for. Let's give them something that's going to represent our community and how we're always going to be mixed at our high schools, no matter where you live. Going back to Eulen Elementary School, uh, I was a big proponent of naming it Eulen. For the simple fact, I'm looking for consistency. Kyle Elementary, Buta Elementary, this is the first elementary in that area. So let's give that area something to be prideful for, to start their educational process. Not that they haven't been a part of Hay CISD, but we're actually putting an institution of education in that area now. We have that opportunity. So let's give them their namesake, just like we've given Buta and Kyle. And then as we grow, if we have to put more elementary schools, then we can go back to that list that we have, come back as a committee and as a community, and let's pick from that list of wonderful names. Because there wasn't, except for, what was it, Schooly McSchool Pants was probably the worst name we had. You know, there were serious considerations given by our community. So there was a lot of pride in our community in naming these schools. And so that's why I come before you and I make the recommendation of Eula, Eulin Elementary and uh, William Mo Johnson. But if you have any questions on the process, feel free to ask. Thank you, sir. Thank you, members of the community, or the committee, and thank the members of the community as well. Um, I think that uh, probably summing the whole thing up is that there were a lot of great names uh, that were on that list, and uh, that's a really good.
problem to have. You have a lot of names you can choose from. I think now it's just a matter of, of selecting the board, selecting what they think is the best name out of a pool of great names. And so with that, we stand ready for any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Savoy. Thank you, committee. Uh, let's, let's go to the board with questions or comments. Does anybody have anything they would like to ask of the committee this evening? Down here on the right, down here on the left. Sir, Mr. Tenorio. All right. Um, so since, uh, since making these recommendations public, um, what type of feedback have y'all gotten on the name now that they, they're out there? If y'all have gotten any, I'd like to just hear from y'all. I wish that this could help, but it's really 50-50. Um, you get certain folks who, um, I think the Bales was one I spoke to this morning, and she mentioned um, the connection that she had to Mo, so she was all about that. And others I've talked to think Buta High is the best name. I'm sure you guys have. Do you guys have more? You do. Come talk. And I also want to thank uh, the school board members for including us in this process. My name is John Jackson, but uh, the people in the towns that I've talked to, and I do sub in the district, by the way, and I love working with your son. Uh, he's a great kid. Uh, but at any rate, uh, almost everybody agrees that no matter what you choose for the high school, it will be 50-50 a mistake or not a mistake. <laughs> And then that's really where the, where the community sits. I think it's about a 50-50. Yulin, no-brainer. But uh, we do appreciate, uh, I know that you would like to have had us bring you one name, but we just couldn't do that. Uh, and so it's up to you. There's seven of you. You can split it up pretty easy. So, uh, But at any rate, that's where it is. The whole community seems like no matter which one you choose, you can't go wrong, you can't go right. So um, I know that we got we got a lot of suggestions. I don't know if people could on the suggestion list if they could identify where they were or who, with their name or if they did that. I was trying to figure out how many uh, suggestions do we get from the actual city of Euland if if we were able to track that. I don't know if we were tracking the origin of the or the recommendation where the people were from. I think we were on the rezoning, but not on the naming form. I'd have to double check that though. Okay. It wasn't on the naming where they were from. Okay. Oh, we had to, they had to check and confirm that they were a resident of the resident. district, though, because okay. that's that's part of it. So the reason I'm asking that is just trying to ascertain, you know, how many people within the city of Ulan responded um, to that. Mm -hmm. sure. I'll, I'll just when one of the people that had to step down was actually the mayor of Ulan, and when this name came forward, he gave us probably one of the most emotional talks about how Yulin is amazing and told us that was his recommendation. I think pretty much all of us were just like, sold. And that's, that's kind of why. And so, he, I mean, obviously the mayor, people of Yulin, that's who he was representing in my opinion. Um, and, and he was pretty much sold. That was their choice. And uh, so I think for a lot of us, that was just kind of a no-brainer at that point. Um, there was a lot of really good names on there, but when the mayor of Yulin says, everybody in my town wants it to be Yulin, you kind of just bow down and say, yep, sounds good. Thank you, that's very helpful. And I can, I can, oh, go ahead. I have for feedback, and it concerns the naming of the elementary school, Uland, and this mainly comes from being also part of the, um, the rezoning committee. Most of our families in Uland are not zoned for the new elementary school. They are going to be zoned for Camino Real, or they still, I don't know, they're not at Hemp Hill anymore, but I think they're all going to be in Camino Real. So none of the families actually with an address in Uland will attend at the school. Mr. Tenorio, did you have anything further? No, that, that's, that's very helpful also. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else before I go? Yeah. Okay. I have a couple of questions. <laughs> now. <laughs> um, I am interested about the attendance zone. We haven't done the attendance zones That's yet. That's next month. Yes. yes. So, um, but perhaps we could get some guesstimates uh, from our demographer about what that might look like next time for next board memo before we, we are not going to vote on this until December. 
but some additional information about possibilities for attendant zones would be great. Um, we are fortunate to have some very good choices, I think. I, um, I don't feel like, I feel like we'll, we will be right with whatever we choose. Sometimes in our position, we are presented with two choices that are actually terrible on, on things. And it's the lesser of two evils, which is still evil, right? But in this situation, that's not the case. Um, I think our community will feel um, like we can all stand tall with whatever it is that we choose. And hopefully, we're going to move forward here with um, some strong consensus when we vote on this in December. I'm grateful for your service. We are all grateful for your service. Um, I, we know that it's tireless work. And um, I don't have any further questions with the exception of that bit of information related to the, to the attendance zones. Does anybody else have anything right now? Sir? Mr. Tenorio, sorry. Okay. I, I just want to say, um, well, when I went to Colum Elementary in uh, Hayes Middle School, because there was a Hayes Middle School back then, and then Hayes High School, my uh, superintendent was Mr. Johnson. I can't call him Mo because I've been calling him Mr. Johnson my whole life. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not allowed to do that. Um, so I think he left when I was, he left when I was in high school and we, uh, that's when he, he moved on and retired from the, from the district and then went to go work in the private sector. Um, you know, he's got a lot of, definitely has a lot of respect. You know, I respect him myself quite a bit. Uh, I know that he uh, has left a wrong, strong, legacy in the community that hasn't been forgotten. So I wanted to recognize that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shnoria. Do we have any other questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. Savoy. Thank you, committee. Thank you.